When most people visit New York, they are most excited about things like the Statue of Liberty or the Empire State Building. When I visited recently, I was most excited about going running along the Hudson Palisades, a long line of cliffs just across the George Washington Bridge from Manhattan. After waiting under the bridge for the rain to clear, in the company of a friendly cyclist, I was finally on my way to the Palisades Interstate Park. The way down from the bridge was surprisingly long and complicated, but after a while I reached the shore trail and headed north along the Hudson River, hoping that no more rain would come. At first the trail wasn't very challenging. The only hurdle to take was a sizable fallen tree. The trail crossed several parking lots, and some of it was actually roads. But the views were already very promising. After a while the asphalt disappeared, and when I progressed past the range of the casual stroller, the trail suddenly became more technical. This is what trail running is about. It was strange to find a deserted place like this so close to the craziness of New York City. But even after just a few days in the city, it was a relief to have quietness around me. New York seems to think that bigger is always better. And yes, a lot of their big things are amazing sights. It brings about a lot of craziness though. And even if you flee into the unmeasurable Central Park, the quietness you find is relative. The noises of the city may lose their edge, but they never quite disappear as long as you are in Manhattan. But on this side of the Hudson, the world is quiet. After the first few kilometers, the short trail was amazing. It was challenging, but only a few times was it so difficult that I had to switch to walking. It was also very diverse. Dirt, rocks, mud, sand, grass, it had everything. And then there was the scenery. A strange ruin on a weirdly well-kept lawn in the middle of nowhere. I imagined it lined with cannons intended to sink enemy ships on the Hudson. Afterwards I found out that it is a bathhouse from the 1920s, but in my imagination it still is a historic fort. A bit further I came upon this. Half of the beauty of a waterfall is in its sounds. Almost two hours into the run, I reached my furthest point and climbed the cliffs on a surprisingly easy trail. Then I headed back south on the aptly named Long Path on top of the Palisades. The views up there were great, but most viewing points were slightly off the trail. I visited a couple of them to take video one more just for me, and then I skipped most of them to shorten my way back by a few insignificant meters. For more than an hour, I didn't see any people on the trail. Occasionally though, I did have some company. Halfway back along the long path, I started struggling. Walking difficult stretches is a perfectly fine trail running strategy, but it was getting harder and harder to switch to running again. A couple of times I stumbled on not so difficult terrain. I was getting tired. At last the George Washington Bridge came back into view, but the huge structure still looked quite small, and it was obvious that I was not yet near the end. I regretted wishing for good weather earlier. It was now blazing hot in open areas like this. Like the shore path, the long path passed some parking lots. Unfortunately, they came without vending machines, so I had no chance to do something about my plummeting blood sugar levels. This is what they call hitting the wall. And then, at the third parking lot on the long path, 
something magical happened. It didn't have vending machines either, but it did have a drinking fountain. And even though I still had water in my backpack, I couldn't have been happier about it. Cold water. An opportunity to wash the sweat of my face and the dirt of my hands. It felt amazing. And then I was flying. The trail also got easier, that helped. But the little drinking fountain is what really got me going again. I have only hit a metaphorical wall a couple of times before. And this was the very first time that I managed to climb over it. Soon I reached the George Washington Bridge, feeling on top of the world. It seemed an eternity ago, that rainy morning on which I had crossed the bridge in the other direction. And it felt so good to be back. In that moment, looking back on the Palisades and looking towards the skyline of Manhattan, I felt small and infinite at the same time. And I could not imagine a more wonderful finish line than the bare steel arches of the George Washington Bridge.